Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'll be reviewing Fringe Mentalism by David Anik and Ken Dine. Before I do the review, a couple of things. You know the rules. Like, subscribe if you want to do any of them things. You don't have to. Uh, but you v really should go and check out onlinemagic.co, see why everybody gives it good reviews. Five star reviews on Trustpilot, uh, one after the other. No negative feedback, and I do ask for it, so do check out that over 600 videos, live sessions every week, and every month we have guest lecturers. So have a look at that. All for 9 99 a month, which is preposterous. Very preposterous. So just a bit of a heads up. Uh, David Anik is... It gets a bit confusing because Dave released a trick with Ken Dine under the name of Dave Cook. So, but David Anik, his performing name, who he performs under, who he performs under, uh, the name he performs, the, the name he uses when he's performing. Oh, gosh. Um, I'm so good at this, aren't I? And so that's him. So if you're thinking Outlook, I'm reviewed by... Um, David under Dave Cook. Anyway, you get you get the idea. So the important thing is that Dave has been David has been performing his Edinburgh shows for 10 years. And that's kind of what he's been doing. So a lot of you will go, well, who's Dave Anik? Well, you won't know him because he's performing all the time. That's what he does. He's either performing or writing. And I know this firsthand, which I'll probably talk about later if I remember. So he works for months and months and months on his Edinburgh shows, does his Edinburgh shows, and then works for months and months and months for his next Edinburgh show, and then, of course, does the shows uh, throughout the year as well at different festivals. What this is, it's not an effect. It is, well, seven effects, I think. Is it seven? Yeah, all right, six, maybe. Um, but the important thing is it's the effects, but it's, it's him and Ken Dine pulling them apart and really exploring the thinking behind them and the why, really. So Dave is amazing at zooming out so I've got loads of books on the minutiae. They're kind of, you know, they put the finger there to do the slight and all that. And Dave's a skilled magician, um, but he's also a very skilled actor. He's a trained actor and he really knows his chops when it comes to theatre and, um, and putting things together theatrically, what works on stage and in parlour. And I think this will totally help your close up as well. So they sit and discuss these effects, pull them apart, give you the why. And so that means the learning... Yes, you can learn the effects and, and perform them, but you can transfer this to, to a lot of other things very, very easily. So uh, it's a two hour download. They sit and chat, discuss this and, um, and pull apart the effects. So what are the effects? First one is a macro personality. I'm terrible at remembering names. Now, macro personality is a brilliant example of how you can take a simple idea. And he's, like he says, and it reminds me of what Andy Nyman does a lot as well he, he he doesn't want to get caught up in loads of technical stuff especially in an opening effect so you know, i'm not i'm not sure whether this is an opening effect but it it feels like that thing of doing something quite easy but giving it this really big presentation around it so it's a you know this could be just oh you yeah, pick a card that's what it is but it just elevates it for, and and it makes it feel like basically a personality test and so, that someone is choosing looking through a card and choosing one rather than a face down thing and it's why they've chosen that. So it's cartomancy mixed with a kind of personality test. And it's a lovely presentation with two people on stage. And again, it's it's that thing of here's something that could be, OK, this is how you elevate it to something different. And of course, they break down the reasons for that things are done differently. But what I really liked about it, it's a really good example also of what you can get away with. And I don't mean that as in you should have poor technique to get away with it. I mean, what you can get away with when you're playing a trick outwards. And I always remember, I think it was Bob Cassidy, it may have been Richard Osterlin, but I'm pretty sure it was Bob Cassidy that wrote that, you know, you could get away, it was actually, I think, you know, you could get away with, with writing the work for Shakespeare with a nail writer, the amount of walking up and down a stage he does. You know, that when you're playing things out and you're playing it big, you don't need any ludicrously technical sleight of hand. And, and don't get me wrong, Dave's very good with a deck of cards, but it's that thing of giving yourself a break and working on the presentation. And he said nine tenths of, of his stuff is about the revelation. And, you know, we know this about mentalism anyway. But again, he gives you loads of ideas of how you can elevate your magic, even if you want to do it differently with, with this, this theory. Tossed out text is 
a brilliant, absolutely brilliant presentation of Tossed Out Deck, which is such a simple change and again takes no extra skill, but you can see as the re result of all that work, it's that thing of, you can just imagine going, oh, if I did that, that would be that, and that would just, again, elevate this trick. Now, the Tossed Out Deck is a brilliant routine, and they do talk about how to do it, you know, the basic version, but just adding this bit is something that, and I'm not sure he'd be happy about this, is that you're just going to want to do it. And, and it feels like it's very him because it's from his show, but obviously he's done that show now and, and he's, he's sharing it. But I just thought it was brilliant. It's a brilliant way of introducing text messaging to the thing without it feeling like, you know, nobody's going to think it's an app or anything like that. But getting loads of people involved in the audience and giving someone his phone, and it, it, I just thought it was brilliant. And it's a, it, they talk also about this idea of weaving an effect through a show. So it doesn't have to be start the effect, middle of the effect, end the effect. But how do you introduce the idea first and weave it through the show and come up with a, with a closer? And, I, you know, we've seen Darren Brown do this sort of thing really, really well. But, you know, it's really good to see someone like Dave talk about it and talk about his theory behind it. So... Here's what's about to happen. In a moment, Ollie and I are quite literally going to leave the room. Uh, we're going to step about five paces down the corridor that way so you can't hear the conversation we're having. During that time, I'm going to talk to Ollie for about a minute, maybe two minutes top end, and I'm going to teach him how to read someone's mind. Then Ollie is going to come back and attempt to perform said feat for all of you. Up to spec. Again, I, this fooled me. I looked at this and I couldn't, because I'm not, a, I do some mentalism, but I'm not a, a, you know, a, a knowledgeable mentalist. But I watched this and I thought, that's great. And then when he described it, it's, it's really, really clever. And it's really good that this is, that he shows you him doing this on stage. And you know he's done it night after night after night in Edinburgh. So you know it works. Because I think if I'd have read this effect just in a book, I would have thought, is that going to work? And I'd have been quite worried about doing it. And they talk at length about this. And I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. It's, it's a cork. And what he says is that if he does this kind of effect, which is a kind of, kind of dual reality thing, but he still wants that spectator to have an amazing experience and maybe even better than the experience of the people in the audience. And that person goes away just completely blown away. And I, and I, I just think this is absolutely brilliant. And I think, you, I was going to say this is worth the price of download alone, but they all are. And it's a ridiculously low price as well for what you get, like really. Um, but this, this really, really impressed me. But again, they all did really. And it's a masterclass in spectator management as well. Dave talks a lot about this and, and this is all those worries you might have. And it's not instant stooging or anything like that, but just being really clear, which also you see this done very well in a later Zoom trick, which I'll talk about in a sec. The Wise Owl, again, like the first trick, is another way of elevating what could be a simple card trick. Again, making it feel like you're influencing a person with a kind of open prediction, a very, very different open prediction. The, the card isn't at all on the, on, the, on the table, and that's not that kind of prediction. But, you know, they read out a sentence first, and then you say, right, you, you know, what card are you drawn to or whatever, and, and then there's this lovely revelation. Again, this is done actually in the, in the studio sitting down, um, but it's something that is just, again, really simple to put together, really quick, and will make it not seem like a card trick or much more than just a card trick. And loads of work on the classic force as well. He does a, he does a face up classic force. Now that's giving something away, but I think we're okay at this point. But he's got loads and loads of work on that. And I know, you know, when I was learning classic force, I wanted to listen and learn as much as I could. And I couldn't find that much. I know there was a lot, lot out there, but most things were saying the same. And he's got a couple of bits on this, which I think are brilliant. He's got a great out, which, which you know, if it doesn't work, do this. And I just think it completely justifies it. doesn't look like you've missed. And, I, and for those people learning the classic force, it gives you that lovely comfort blanket, that safety net. Ethereal cards. This is this Zoom trick. And this was a real surprise to me because when I watched him do it, and they show him doing it in a Zoom show, quite a busy Zoom show, loads of people. But... I was watching this kind of going, yeah, it's okay, it's very processy and they all get to a thing. But then the responses, and I've actually for missed some of the subtleties because I'm a magician, I'm seeing it from a magician's point of view. But you can see the response. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> I don't believe it, George. People are absolutely blown away. They go through a process with a deck of cards. And I remember doing one of the card zoom card tricks a lot of people were doing at the time in lockdown and also myself being completely surprised and somebody said to me i did things like wiki test and he's real 
mind-blowing mentalism effects, but the thing that people remember is when they, they had the deck of cards in their hand, they just said, that is the best thing I've ever seen. And the nightmare page, which I've seen David do, which is a book test with one page, which you can make up yourself, and he t tells you how to do that. He tells you his theory behind it. And it's really, really nice. He's got a tatty page, and he gives it to someone, and he, he does a book test of a revelation of a chosen word. And, and it's got this, this kind of rich, they talk about, and I remember seeing Richard Osling do for the first time, but a lot of other mentalists do, which is this thing of, okay, this is the word you thought of first, but you change your mind to this. And I, again, really powerful, something you can stick in your wallet, walk around with, and, and the result of a lot of thought. And again, it's quite a simple idea, but something you can just layer loads of presentation on. So I said I, said I was worried about this because I know David, and it can be really, really awkward. So thankfully, thankfully, this is really really good so and breathe but why is it good i think the first thing is that because i mentioned earlier david has that the theatrical part of it the acting side of it and the magic side of it and he does his reading he reads and reads about writing about he's he's really passionate and obsessive about this stuff and he goes to work he is someone that I know this because I meet him in the cafe and he's like, I'm in mean, Costa today and he works in cafes all the time and he spends just hours and hours and hours picking apart why things will work. So what you're seeing here isn't just five effects with some stuff. It's the result of hours of thinking, which I think will inspire you, but also give you some genuine, some really genuine practical tools to use to take into your own work. And if you're someone that's thinking, I'm nervous about doing my first show, this is a brilliant grounding for it. But also for people like me who have done different shows to kind of go, no, I need to, I need to think about it more that way. So in that respect, it's, it's uh, in that respect, it's gold. Also the fact that Ken is there, Ken, Dying, being there is so important because quite often he'll say things like, you know, I saw this as, as, as you doing this and and this quite often happens with any creator. It's, oh yeah, I didn't realise I was doing that, but I was. And to have that person to notice the things that David doesn't notice is, and question things is important or, and come out with different ideas. There's a lot of extensions where well, you could do this. Well, if you bought an invisible deck in, you could do that as a final revelation. And having two people is so much more powerful than having one person because having one person, even when you see filmmakers, you know, they'll say, well, I was planning on doing this. And you kind of go, well, I didn't really get that. I got this from it. And to, to question that and to give you the things that that creator won't see, I think is a really powerful thing. Now, importantly, Dave not only has the skill, but he also has the skill of being able to talk about it. And this is really important. When you've got someone explaining what they do, and they've got that vocabulary because of all the reading and work and study they've done. They get to the point pretty quickly. Now, it doesn't mean to say that Dave can't talk. He's one of the few people that will give me a run for my money. And when we get together, you know, I think we're about four going off. That was amazing so much. So, but it can be really intense. So it's, it's not that it's a short, you know, he goes into it with passion, but he knows how to talk about it. He's eloquent about it, as is Ken. So that makes this, again, so much more than it could have been. And when I say that, this was the other thing I was worried about. I've reviewed a couple of things and I reviewed a DVD a while ago and I'm not going to go into who it was, but it, what, what that DVD was was an expensive DVD which was thrown together and it felt a little bit cynical. It felt a bit like, oh, if we just talk about stuff, people are going to learn because we know stuff and we can chuck it out and make a load of money. And I've, this could be that, two people talking about a show, you know, and we can do that basically in one take, you know, you know stick a film on me and David Costa and yes, you'd learn some stuff, but it would feel like that. It would feel like they've just stuck a camera on it. This doesn't feel like that. This feels like it, uh, there's no filler in this. Everything. These conversations you are such rich learning grounds. And does that make sense? I think it does. Um, in the same way that I always say to people, I mean, I'm not just plugging my own thing for the sake of here, but when we do the live sessions on online magic, .co, I say to people, come along and just turn your camera on and watch because you learn so much from, from hearing magicians talking and discussing things. And sometimes, yeah, I can waffle on about nonsense, but they definitely don't in this. So that, again, there's so much learning there. So hearing two people that are friends but are pulling apart performances, I think is something you don't get enough of. I would read books and books and books on that. And it's just, it's, it's solid stuff. So gladly, it's great. A lot of you aren't going to know about it so do go and check it out and use the links below it's a no-brainer i didn't know how much this was because i just got sent the download i looked at how much it was and it's like 17 pound 99 this is 
you'll learn more from this than you will from some books and DVDs that you'll buy for a hundred quid. Uh, I think it's underpriced and, and that's, that's good. That's a good thing because it means a lot of people take the learning on and be able to use it and it will be a good thing for magic and mentalism. Uh, so as I said, links below. Thank you, David and Ken, for sending this to me. Uh, do check out Ken's other stuff. It's all great. He, he's someone, again, who, who really knows his stuff. Uh, whatever you're doing, have a good one. Please like, subscribe. Do, after this, go straight over to onlinemagic.co after buying this, if you're going to buy it. And, um, and I'd, I'd love you to go and have a look at that. And I will be putting more blogs and things on that. If you also look below, you will see a free introduction to Card Magic course and a free spread curl course. Um, you get them absolutely free just for your email address. I ain't going to spam you. I'll just send you the odd thing in the odd blog post. Have a great one. Take care. See you later.